let's adapt this idea of independence to pairs of random variables. Okay, so remember when we defined independence before, we had events A and B, and we said that they're independent if the probability of the intersection of A and B is equal to the product of the probability of A and the probability of B. And so for pair of random variables, we're going to take basically the same definition. So X and Y are independent if you pick any events you'd like, A and B, and the probability that X belongs to A and Y belongs to B factors in the same way. So if you take the probability of the intersection of the event that X belongs to A and Y belongs to B, then you get the product of the probability that X belongs to A and Y belongs to B. Okay, so this is a stronger notion of independence, and it seems hard to check, okay, because now, instead of being given the events, I'm telling you that it needs to hold for every event that you could ever come up with. But the good news is that it's actually easier to check than you would think, okay? And so it turns out, and we're not going to prove that this is true, that a pair of random variables x and y is independent if and only if they're CDF factors. So if you look at the joint CDF, it factors like this, so into the product of the marginal CDFs. And in fact, for discrete x and y, you can write the same condition in terms of the PMF. So you have the joint PMF factor as the product of the marginals. And for continuous random variables x and y, you can just check the joint PDF. So you just check that the joint PDF f of xy can be written as the product of the marginals f of x and f of y. Okay, so what's the intuition here? Like before, if x and y are independent, then we cannot predict x after observing y any better than we could if we had no observation, okay? And vice versa, so you could do the same uh, for y. And so we can formalize this intuition using conditional distributions, okay? And this is kind of the same thing we were doing before. So what we'll say is that discrete random variables um, x and y, all right, so these are independent if and only if you can write the conditional PMF of x given y as just the marginal of x, and you can write the conditional PMF of y given x just as the marginal of y. And it turns out it suffices for us to just check one of these conditions. So if one of these holds, then both of them will automatically hold. Okay, and the reason for that is the joint PMF can always be written as the product of the conditional and the marginal. The same exact thing holds for continuous random variables. So if you have x and y and they are independent, what that means is that it's equivalent to being able to write the conditional PDF as just the marginal. Okay, and you can do that in either direction from x to y or y to x. And it suffices to just check one of these conditions. Again, because of the multiplication rule, we can always write um, the joint PDF f of xy as the product of a conditional and a marginal like we have here. Okay, let's do an example. In this example, I'm going to write x and y, and these are going to be discrete. So we're going to have a, a joint PMF table, all right? So these are discrete random variables. They're going to have the following joint PMF table. All right, so here's the table. I'm going to write out the values of the joint PMF. So let's say x has um, values 0 and 1, y has values 0 and 1, so I have a sixth, a half, a twelfth, and a fourth. What I want to know is are x and y independent? Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and check this uh, pretty directly. So the first thing I'm going to do is compute the marginal PMFs, p of x and p of y. And then the next thing I'm going to do is check if this joint PMF can indeed be written as the product of these marginals. Okay, so first I'm going to get the marginal PMF of x. So I'm going to get that by um, adding up each column. Okay, and so I'm going to get a sixth plus a twelfth for x equals zero. All right, and I'm going to get a half plus a fourth for x equals one. Okay, and that simplifies down to just being a fourth and um, three fourths. 
Okay, so that's going to be the marginal PMF of X. And I'm gonna do the same thing for Y. I'm gonna add up in this case each row because that's where the values of Y are held fixed across the rows. So I'm gonna get again a sixth plus a half. And then um, that's for Y equals zero. And then a twelfth plus a fourth, that's for Y equals one. And so that's going to be uh, two thirds when Y is equal to zero and then one third for y is equal to one. So what we're gonna do with this information is we're going to check if the product, when we write it as a table, gives us the same table. So I'm just filling out this table again. I'm gonna have a fourth times two thirds for this first position. That's one sixth, that's the same. I'm gonna have three fourths times two thirds. That's going to be a half. Again, that's the same. A fourth times a third, that's going to be one twelfth, same. And finally, we know where this is going, three fourths times a third, that's going to be one fourth, that's the same. And so since the joint PMF can be written as a product of the marginal PMFs, we know that X and Y are independent. Okay, let's try a continuous example, all right? So we're gonna look at X and Y, which are going to be continuous with the joint PDF I'm gonna write below. And this joint PDF in particular, we saw before in an earlier video. So it's going to be um, one third X plus Y between uh, X from zero to two and Y from zero to one and zero otherwise, okay? And so if you go back to an earlier video in this chapter, you would see the exact same joint PDF as part of an example. And in particular, in that example, um, we worked out the marginal PDFs, at least in one case. So here we're interested in knowing if X and Y are independent. And the first step is to determine the marginal PDF. So we're just gonna recalculate this because we don't have it on hand. And so we're gonna see that the marginal PDF of X is this integral of the joint PDF taking out y, so I integrate over the range of y from zero to one, it turns out to get a third xy plus a sixth y squared from zero to one, that works out to be x over three plus one sixth from x going from zero to two. And you notice that I only write the range here in this last step just to save space, but I could have had it throughout. The same thing for the marginal of y, so I'm integrating from zero to two and I'm trying to integrate out x in this case, the undesired variable. So I get a sixth x squared plus a third xy, this time going from zero to two. And so if you plug that in, you get um, two y over three plus two thirds, okay? And that goes from zero to one for y. Again, we could have had the range throughout, but it's easier to just uh, write it only in the end. So finally, we're gonna check if the product of these marginal PDFs actually agrees with the joint PDF. If it does, they are independent. So we're gonna multiply these two functions. So I have f of x and f of y. So that's x over three plus one sixth times um, two y over three plus two thirds. And so if you multiply these out, you are going to get a function that um, looks like what we're gonna have. Just remember we omitted the range again, just to save space. So I'm just reminding you of that. So um, we're gonna to have to write that as well. And so what we're gonna get are these two cases. So one is gonna be one ninth, two X plus one times Y plus one. And this is actually over the original range of the function from zero to two for X and zero to one for Y. And if we look at this, uh, these, this function, even though it has the same range, okay, as the original joint PDF, and we've finally written that down, and we haven't forgotten it, um, it does not agree. So it's not equal to one third X plus Y, okay? And so X and Y are dependent, meaning they're not independent in this case. Okay, so we had to check that this uh, does not factor. Right, so is there an easier way to check for independence? That was a bit tedious. And the answer is sometimes there is, all right? So if the range does not factor as a product of these two sets, 
then the joint PMF or PDF will not factor either. So if the range isn't factoring, we're already done. So in the discrete case, what that means is if there is a pair XY for which the joint PMF is exactly zero there, but the marginal PMF is not zero in either case, then X and Y are dependent. Okay, and in a table, what that means is that there is a zero entry for which neither the entire column is zero nor the entire row is zero. Okay, we're gonna see an example of that, but basically what you're looking for is a table where there's a zero that is not part of an all zeros column or an all zeros row. In the continuous case, it's the same setup. So if there's a pair X, Y, for which the joint PDF is zero, but neither the marginal of X nor the marginal of Y is zero, then X and Y are dependent. And in the joint range sketch, the way that this would manifest is that the range would not be a collection of rectangles that's parallel to the axis, okay? So if I can write the range as a bunch of rectangles, then this could still be true. And if I can't, then it's not true. In general, even if the range factors, so if either of these conditions are actually met, then X and Y may still be dependent, okay? And if you think back just to the previous slide, that's what was happening. The range was correct, but X and Y were dependent because the function itself did not factor. But if the range did not factor, then we're already done. We don't need to check any further. Let's do a few examples. Okay, so in the first example, I'm going to write this table. I'm gonna fill it in with a fifth, zero, a fifth, a fifth, a fifth, and a fifth. And in this case, I see that there is a zero entry, but this zero entry is isolated, meaning that neither the row that it's in, okay, so the first row, nor the column that it's in, so neither the first row nor the second column are all zero, okay? So this zero is kind of alone and that can't be explained by one of the marginals being zero. And so we know X and Y are dependent in this case. I didn't need to go through, calculate the marginals and multiply them all together to check entry by entry. Just the presence of that zero on its own without the row or the column being all zeros, that tells me that it's not going to work out. Okay, so let's write another range. So let's write a range here. And let's say it would be a continuous case. So the joint range is from A going from um, X going from A to B, Y going from C to D. So that's a rectangle. And I can think of it as the product of these two range sets. So there's the range for X and the range for Y. I can think of this as the product of these. And so I could formally, and if you're not used to this way of writing set products, that's okay. I could think of it as a product of the ranges. Visually, the way that that looks, which should make sense, is that I have between A and B, and then I have between C and D. Okay, and my range, the thing that I have has to live between these boundaries that are set up by the constraints on X and Y. Okay, and I see that it does. So in fact, if I go and try to satisfy um, what I have on the left here, I'll see that it exactly fits into these boundaries. So in fact, the range does factor in this case. Okay, so it's possible that X and Y are independent we have not ruled it out. And what we have to do in this case might be a little more tedious. I have to go and check if the function itself factors, okay? So the easy case is when the range does not factor, here it did factor, but if it does not factor, then I can stop checking. So let's look at an example like that. So let's say the range um, is just a circle, okay? So x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to one. And so I'm just gonna draw the sketch of the range. So in this case, I'm gonna have this green circle, just filling it in. Okay, so I have this green circle and the range here does not factor. So I can't think of this as a rectangle. And so I know that X and Y have to be dependent. I don't even need to look at the joint PDF 
I can just say that alone from the range. Okay, whereas in example two, so the second part, it was a rectangle, I would have to go and check if the function factors.